Welcome back to Wise Men Company, everybody. I'm Ben. This is Noah. We are doing a tandem video today because we're going to talk about some real nerdy stuff, and it's just not my forte. Luckily, Noah's good at this stuff. We're going to be talking about walkie-talkies in my terms. That's what I would call these. Recently, this has been kind of a hot-button issue. These are, no, Noah, correct me if I'm wrong, dual-frequency unlicensed portable radios. Yeah, so, that's so that's they're, issue. So they're unlicensed by the FCC, dual band, meaning that they work in the VHF, UHF range. Uh, um, portable, meaning that they're either in a vehicle, but most everybody is talking about the handheld trans transmitters. What's the issue with them? So the issue is that the FCC doesn't like that they are capable of transmitting in unlicensed bands. These were originally marketed to ham operators. Um, they are, again, VHF and UHF. Basically, they have a little segment in each one of those radio frequencies that they are allowed to use because ham operators have to get a license to operate within those frequencies, they are able to use unregulated radios. Business bands, all of the other uh, uh, frequencies that are out there typically either require a license or they require that the FCC says here's how they can operate. Gotcha. So the radio in your hand, is it is that illegal? Is that contraband? What I What is this? So as of September 30th, 2019, you can no longer sell, market uh, um, these radios inside the United States. These were all coming in from China. These were probably the most talked about ones. These are the Beofangs. This is a UV 5R Plus. This is one that I've had for several years. And then just to give you guys some context, Noah and I have been using these for quite some time. Right. And, and we knew for years, like that we've been using them, that there are certain frequencies that we really shouldn't be using yeah. them on. Right. Yes. So now these, as of, would you say, September 30th? September 30th, 2019, they are no longer will you be able to go on Amazon and buy them. Companies that get caught marketing or selling these radios are fine. It's like it's absurd, like the numbers, like it's typical government, just random, like $167.2,000 a day or something along those lines. Why would anybody want these radios? Like what's, where do they shine? What's their role? So, Honestly, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. The Beofangs are, which are the ones that are the most popular, are, are probably not the best radios in the world. What I do want everybody to know is that there were a lot of other radios that were covered under this FCC ruling that also were coming out of China. Some Yesus, Woshuns, or Waxun, or however you pronounce that. Um, some of those other companies that, that did the same thing that actually were more expensive and probably better radios. But these are great because they were affordable and they are just a great entry into using communications. And they are even as poor of quality as they are, they are a step above like the you know, Walmart, the Walmart brand that you pick up in a blister pack. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we have found using these radios to be ideal when we were traveling multiple cars where there wasn't a lot of great cell phone uh, coverage. Right. So where these really shine in, in my opinion is uh, um, because what, what you have to understand is that there's a lot of marketing hype that goes into a lot of these radios where even with the ones that you buy at Walmart, where they're like, you can get 50 miles worth of, uh, uh, you know, distance on these. And, no, and, you can't. <laughs> and sure, if I could actually look through like high powered binoculars, see you 50 miles away, I might be able to, to transmit that. Right. Because you have to understand that these are line of sight frequencies, uh, meaning that basically one radio needs to see the other radio. Now, they do get some reflection, some bounce, some things like that. But most of these in a business type setting are using repeaters. 
Cell phones actually fall into the higher end of the UHF uh, frequency. And we all know that you have to have about 4 billion cell towers all around you in order to have We all know that. Oh, we all know that. So <laughs> that's the concept. And so uh, where these really shine is when you are with a group uh, um, and you are trying to stay in communication. So let's say a there's a whole bunch of you going someplace. You have four vehicles. You're heading to West Virginia. And right, and you know cell coverage is going to be poor. Having one of these in each of the vehicles really is helpful. But again, as we've experienced, if you don't have an antenna on the roof of the vehicle, as, uh, as soon as the vehicle gets out of sight, again, you start to lose that. Uh, it gets uh, difficult. You get that, yeah, you, the signal isn't getting there. So, uh, um, so are they stellar? Probably not, there, but should you have one? I, I think you should. Uh, let's talk about emergency situation, like real emergency situation. Is there some flexibility there on using them? Sure. Much like anything, if there's a life or death situation, uh, you know, a natural disaster or things like that, the frequencies that are reserved for amateur radio or ham operators Nobody is going to probably get too bent out of shape with you for using these radios on those frequencies in a real emergency. Your cat up a tree is not a real emergency. A flat tire on the side of the road, not a real emergency. Running out of White Claw seltzers, real emergency. That is a real emergency. Real emergency. Get on ham <laughs> and make sure that you use the siren feature on these. What about for like the shooters out there that have electronic ear pro? A lot of people like to integrate you know, all st people integrate music into their headsets now. Can you integrate these into a headset? You can, and it is clumsy and uh, a little bit of a workaround to do it. Um, essentially, what you need to do is get a the better of the push-to-talk microphones that plug into this, and on those, they have an audio out jack, so you plug in the microphone to the radio, you store this someplace, you clip your push to talk microphone onto you, then you run the wire from that into the audio on your headset into the audio input jack, and you can make it work. It, it is a bit clumsy, there's a lot of wires, but it does work. Yeah. Uh, um, and again, if you know that's all you have for your, your fire team alpha, I mean, that's what, what yeah, you have. Right, it's not very high speed, but we've played with it, it, it definitely works. What? Some final thoughts, what should the noobs out there know about this? Can they still get them? Should they try even bother getting them? What do you recommend? If you can get your hands on one, uh, you're not going to get in trouble for, probably for purchasing it. Um, again, there's a little bit of gray area on whether or not you can operate these. As long as you're operating them within the safe band. So, oh, and I should mention that there are some for just everyday people uh, um, the FRS bands, the GMRS bands. GMRS is technically you should have a license if you're using it with a removable antenna. That's the other thing that's like, you know, it, it gets weird. It's just like gun laws. Yeah, like, I was just, just gonna say, like it's all just of these like weird technical Just stuff to hang you on. Things. So the MERS frequency, there's about five channels. Those are the most unregulated of them. Um, also marine band, there are, I believe, 16, if I remember correctly, 16 marine band frequencies in the VHF range that you can use without a license. Uh, um, but really, you need to spend a little bit of time of research uh, um, and do that. As a noob, you need to do that. You need to spend some time. You need to know what the sort of a little bit of the background of those. Spend some time immersing yourself in that. Doesn't need, mean you need to figure out how to do dipole antennas and all of those weird Would you things, say programming them is important? Programming them is absolutely important. Do not pull these out of the box and start using them if you <laughs> just got them. Because the programming that they come with standard is absolutely outside of the allowable frequency ranges yeah. for unlicensed use. It's just period, not okay. The other thing is, is that for a lot of places that are still not using digital uh, um, for law enforcement and things like that, that are still using analog, which these are, uh, you could accidentally be transmitting on the fire frequency or the police frequency, and that will absolutely get you in trouble. Yep. So get a programming cable, download the software called Chirp, um, and I'll leave a link in the down in the description to where you can get that. 
spend a little bit of time, learn how to program it. The great thing is, is that if you still have that capability, which unfortunately we don't where we live, uh, um, we can't listen to the police band anymore on these, but when we could, we actually had these programs so that they would only listen. You could actually turn off the transmit portion of that. So right. that's something that's important. You can do that so that it turns it basically into a very inexpensive scanner. And then some other accessories that you might want are the uh, better of the push to talk headsets. Yeah, that's important. Uh, um, and I can tell you right now that you should definitely upgrade your antennas to some Nagoyas. And if you're going to use them in the vehicles, I would highly recommend getting a magnetic mount vehicle antenna. It really does help um, with using it in your car. Yep. Guys, that is really just a brief crash course on this stuff. There is a lot of information. There is a whole cult radio culture out there for those of you that didn't know. I mean, this stuff is really popular and to be, do. And be prepared if you do get into that radio culture, it, it is essentially a good old boys club. It is. It's just like the fuddery of the firearms world. You got to be careful. So they be people prepared. like to tell on one another. Yes. They like to rat on one which, another. Which is most likely what caused the issue with this to begin with from everything that I have found. It's because some people, right or wrong, got bent out of shape and people who didn't have licenses were using frequencies that they shouldn't be. But ultimately, it's a personal responsibility. Yeah. You should be able to control yourself and know what you're doing. Absolutely. Guys, leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. No, we'll get to them. I definitely won't. Hit that like button. Subscribe to Wise Men Company. Go check us out at wisemencompany.com. A lot of great gear over there. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Yeah.